Okay, hello physics. So we went over this in class, but here it is just one more time in case you're still banging your head against the wall at uh, 1052 at night. Hang time. Hang time is a term for flight time. Uh, the deal with, uh, with uh, hang time, if you're starting and ending at the same height, your final height will be zero and your initial height will be zero, which means delta y is zero. Which means when we use the, our big uh, Papa equation, that delta y is zero, because the initial and final are the same. So we can simplify this equation, get rid of one of the t's, and eventually get to this equation down here. Delta t equals the square root of negative 2 times the initial y velocity all over the y acceleration. You can use this to find the hang time. Moving on, maximum height. So the key here is that maximum height occurs at half of the hang time. There. So, we're using the same equation, except this time, uh, for the time, we're going to take half the time that we came up with here. If this was two, this would be one. If this was four, t would be two, etc. So, place where, people, where students get stuck, well, they screw up on VIY. Remember, this is a y equation for height. So all of these are just the y components of initial velocity, the y component of acceleration. So in the problem that you've been given, you probably have vi, not viy. You have to find viy. And so that looks like this. viy is the y component or the vertical component of the initial velocity. And so this is viy. If this is vi and the angle is given, you can use so or sine to find viy. And it'll look like this. Once you find that and you've divided t by 2, you can just plug in to find delta y. Right, you plug in here. And that's it. Last question, range. There's two ways to do this. So first way is to use the range equation. And at this point, you know delta t, it's the whole time delta t. You know vi, and for the range equation, you use vi, not viy, because uh, there's a sine theta already in the range equation, which basically gets you viy. And you use g, which is 9.8 meters per second, not negative. The other way to do it, is to think that uh, Vx is constant, which means that Vx is the same as Vix. I should have wrote Vix right there, because it's constant. So to find this, you can use this relationship, Vix equals Vi cosine theta. And again, this comes from this. Uh, the x portion is down here. This is adjacent to the angle, so we use k. And uh, it's just the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle. We can use this equation and rearrange it from here, right? Velocity is the change in position over change in time. So we can rearrange that to solve for the change in position or the range. It looks like this. So either way, pretty simple. If you haven't memorized the range equation, this always works. So there you go for that. And that does uh, number four and number five on the homework. For number six, it's a little bit trickier, but this is the picture. Starting height, finishing height, initial thing. This is more or less what it would look like. The trick here is that you have to find V final. And in order to do that, you need to know V final in the X direction and V final in the Y direction. So to do that, first thing to know the initial and the y and x, and you do that using sine and cosine. All right, looks like this here for vi, uh, Then you're going to want to use this equation, all right, because we're looking for v final. We know the initial, we know the acceleration, we know the change in height, so this equation works. We're going to use that to find v final on the y. Uh, and let's see. We use v initial and the y to find v final and the y with this equation. Um, oh, sorry. 
That's wrong. This is what happens when you do this when you're sleeping. All right, fixed. So we use this equation to find v final y. We use this relationship to find v final into x because remember x is dun, 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 constant. And then once we know those two things, basically we have something that looks like this. And this is a right triangle. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this right triangle. We know this part, we know that part, Pythagorean theorem, a squared, b squared, c squared. So we'll do that. And then once we know that, we can use the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent equals the angle to find, or equals theta to find the angle. So those are the steps. So if you're banging your head against the wall still, try those out and uh, you'll be able to come up with the solution to this. By the way, the answer to this one it is about 32 meters per second for the final velocity. And the angle, depending on how you do it, you'll either get 82 degrees from the horizontal or you'll get eight degrees, seven and a half degrees, give or take, uh, from the vertical, depending on where you choose your angle to be, either there or right there. All right. Have fun.